In this presentation, we are going to look at some mathematical computing exercises. Now, these are taken from some well-known websites around the internet. I'm not going to name them because I don't want people googling them and finding solutions here. It's better you. Uh, I don't want them. I don't want people find, using this to get solutions for them. So I'm going to keep the, keep the name of it that these challenges uh, secret. If you know it, grant. Anyway, if we list all the natural numbers below ten, that are multiples are three or five, we get three, five, six, and nine. And the sum of these multiples is 23. Okay, 3 plus 5 plus 6 plus 9. Okay, so find all the uh, the sum of all multiples of 3 or 5 below 1,000. Now, again, that's an important little matter there. Below 1,000. Okay. So, uh, how many multiples of n are there less than or equal to n? Slightly different from what we're asking, but we can account for this later on. So. Uh, you, we use the floor function here. This is the floor function. If you're not um, familiar with how it is written mathematically, so n divided by m, and get the floor function of that. The floor function is uh, the integer that precedes n divided by m in the number line. So round it down, basically. How many multiples of 3 are there? Less than 1,000. 1,000 divided by 3, get the floor function of that, we get 333. Okay, so it's less than or equal to 1,000, but you can sort of, in this, in the case of 3, it's just less, it's less than. Okay, so, um, let's go to Julia here now. So, start, start again. So, floor of 1,000 divided by 3. So, we're going to get 333. Let's actually save that as the number of values that is less than 333. Now, what is what is the type of this value here, num? It's actually a float. Now we're going to use the lin space command, which expects a val which expects um, uh, an integer as an input. So we're going to convert this to an integer. So there we have it. There, 333. So actually, just save num as that. Resave it. Okay, 333. So, so far so good. Lin space of 1 to 333, and we are going to have 333 values in that um, series and that are uh, in that in in that uh, sequence. There it is. There. Uh, Four, five, six, all the way up to three hundred thirty-three. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just multiply that by three. So we'll, we'll put the multiplication in there. So those are all the values there that are multiples of three. So it's a very simple command there. So uh, if we had m equal to three, we could write in m there. Okay. Now I've actually written a little function. And up here, and it's pretty much. Um, I mean, it's it's good to actually write everything in terms of functions or learn how to write functions so that you can reuse your pro code again and again. So that's a, um, a function up there, and I call it multifunc. Now I'm going to run that there now, and hopefully that'll work. It looks okay. So multifunc. Um. Is every integer to, um, every value that is a multiple of five? Now, just watch out for one thing. One thousand is included here, and we're not supposed to compute uh, have one thousand in our answer. So, what we'll do is knock that off at the end. We'll show I'll show you how to knock that off at the end. So, we, we won't we won't worry about that now. We're going to call this data set y. So, y equals multifunc. We're just going to call that y. By the way, the default values is one thousand and five up here actually what we I might be a good idea is to pause the video if you want and have a look at that there so uh, y equals multifunc uh, we don't need to change any of the default values so there we have there five okay so we have two data sets now we have X and it is comprised of 333 values and we have y, which is comprised of 200 values. Okay. Now, the thing about it is that there, we're going to find that some um, values are in both. 
So what we're going to do is use set theory. So for example, 15 will be in both. So what we're going to do is use set theory here. Now first off, I'm going to just show you the basic command. That I have to, we'll have to over um, intersect x and y. Okay. Now this is going to, this is in general, these are the values that are in both x and y. Okay. So these are going to get double counted. So there's 46 in both. So that's something to watch out for. That's something to think of. But what we could do is actually uh, use the union of x and y. And that would knock out. Essentially that accounts for uh, double counting. So the union of x and y. Let's give it a look here. So this is any multiple of 3 and any multiple of 5. Now, just in case you're wondering, what's, why is it things taking so long? It's the programming so or the recording software can slow things down a bit here. So this is the union value there. And we're going to call that Z, actually. Well, we're not going to wait for it anymore. So Z is the union of X and Y. Now, um, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to use one command. The last value of Z is going to be 1000. Okay, so what we're going to do is use the pop command to get rid of the last value. So, um, And then we're just going to sum it all up. That's, that's not stopped responding for me. So anyway, I'll just write it up here. Um, pop uh, Z equals sort Z. Well, it's just sorted out. Or have it sorted. It'll probably come out sorted anyway. But just be mindful of that that you might need to sort it. And what we're going to do is pop the last value from Z, which is going to be 1,000, because we're not going to include that. I don't know. Ah, oh, there we go. Finally, there we go. Finally. So, um, so that's it there. Now it's not co it's not come in sorted. So, so what we're going to do is first off sort Z. And we're going to have a look at the last value there. Is 1000. So what we're going to do is get rid of the last value. And we use the pop command there. That gets rid of the last value. So the, now the last value of Z, or the highest value of Z, is 999. So Z, is not in, uh, Z does not include... Z is the union of multiples of 3 and multiples of 5. It does not include 1000. So all we have to do now is sum up Z. So the answer there is 243653. Okay, so that is the first programming exercise. The next one is, of the two, the prime factors of 1, 3, 1, 9, 5 are 5, 7, 13, and 29. Okay, let's just sort of double check that for a second. So let's bring that back up. This one's straightforward enough. The prime, so we're going to use factors. And the number again is 13195. Copy that. There. Factor, sorry. Now, 13, 7, 5, and 1. So what we're asked for is the, um, and the highest value there, the largest prime number, a uh, factor of this number here is what? Well, we can go factor of that. Okay, so we can see that the answer is 6, 8, 5, 7, this one here. But what we could do is actually take out the maximum value directly rather than just reading it. It's better for the sake of programming. There we have uh, there we have the value there six eight five seven. We can actually just run that again. It's set up as a little array there with two values. We can just pick out the first one there. All right, that's uh, program exercise one and two. Two was quite long, but one was fairly easy. Factor is the name of the command there, and you can use maximum there as well. All right, that ends our presentation.